the Scottish government was informed on December 21 that a post-mortem examination showed the Cryptococcus bacteria was a factor in the youngster's death. Since then, tens of thousands of people have passed through the pound's 842 million super hospital without being informed of the outbreak. Meanwhile, NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde last night admitted another two patients at the hospital had contracted a different fungal infection from a water leak. The initial cases were not disclosed until Friday evening, before the health board announced almost 24 hours later that both patients had died. It has since emerged the first death of an elderly patient in November was not caused by inhaling the fungus. Miss Freeman visited the hospital yesterday before updating MSPs at Holyrood and announcing a review of the fabric of the building, which she described as less than satisfactory. Scottish Tory Glasgow MSP Annie Well said, the fact one of these deaths involved a child makes this all the more tragic. This is simply not the kind of scenario that should be unfolding in Scotland in the 21st century, and absolutely not at such an expensive and newly built facility. The Scottish government was informed of this before Christmas, and there's no excuse if this was deliberately kept secret. Families will now want reassurance that ministers moved to address this problem immediately, rather than waiting almost a month when it became public knowledge. We owe it to the families involved to find out exactly what happened. Scottish Labour Health spokesman Monica Lennon said that the public would be shocked to learn of the child's death and claimed there was a lack of clarity from the health board. She added, I think the people of Scotland will feel it is extraordinary that in a modern hospital, Scotland's flagship and apparently super hospital no less, we have a situation where pigeons and infections can kill patients. The Labour MSP pressed Miss Freeman on when ministers were alerted after claims that her predecessor, Shona Robison, was contacted in March 2018 about pigeons at the hospital. Miss Freeman said a thorough search of records had found no trace of such a letter either at the government or Miss Robison's constituency office. She went on to explain the pigeon droppings had been traced to a rooftop machine room, with the birds had gotten through a very small hole in the wall which was invisible to the naked eye. It is still unclear how the bacteria entered the closed ventilation system. After the outbreak was confirmed, the health board put in place infection control measures, including antifungal medication to vulnerable patients and the provision of extra air filters. Miss Freeman said, I am confident the board have taken all the steps they should to ensure and maintain patient safety. But she admitted there were questions over whether the hospital was fit for purpose after a series of infection and maintenance incidents. These have included sewage leaks, outbreaks of bacteria in the water supply and a pane of glass that fell 150 feet and narrowly missed a mother and her children. A health board spokesman said, we have reassured Ms. Freeman that patient safety is our top priority. We are pleased an external expert advisor is to work with us on a review of the fabric of the hospital to look at issues relating to the design, commissioning, and maintenance program 